Hello, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Films in the Lake District with Charlie Sprozon from Mountain Run. And today we are going to do some run scrambling. So Charlie, what is run scrambling? Yeah, uh, run scrambling, it's, it's quite simple. I mean, it's just a combination of running and scrambling. What is scrambling? What is scrambling, yeah. So scrambling is easy grade rock climbing. Brilliant, it sounds fantastic. So where are we gonna go today? So we're sitting in the uh, Great Langdale Valley. We're outside the Stickle Barn. It's a great place to meet. We're gonna go and do probably one of the most coveted scrambles in the Lake District being Pavey Arc uh, and, and a scramble called Jack's Rake that runs diagonally across an improbable uh, line, basically, that when you look at it, looks very severe, but actually when you get to grips with it, we've got a lovely groove to go up. Uh, it's a nice grade one scrambling and uh, a very, very classic route. Fantastic, so Jack's Rake on Pavey Arc. Off we go, I'll follow you. Cool. And we're gonna go first up Stickle Gill. Uh, Stickle Gill's a nice warm up for where we're actually aiming to get to. Uh, then we're gonna approach a little crag called Tarn Crag, do a sort of grade one easy scramble on Tarn Crag. It's not quite detailed down as rock climbing, although we are climbing on rock. We've got four points of contact or three points of contact, so we're using hands and feet on the rock. Uh, the idea of run scrambling is rather than traditionally people who are going out scrambling would wear walking boots or a scrambling type boot, we're not going to be doing that, we're going to be dressed in running clothing, we're going to be going light, uh, we're going to be going quite a bit quicker uh, and, and much freer and easier and we're wearing running shoes at the same time, which for me makes it a lot nicer, uh, less technical and easier to, to be able to scramble, much more free feeling. Here we are at the bottom of Jack's Rake on Pavey Arc and uh, we have got helmets. So Charlie, is it going to be dangerous up there? Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously we're moving into dangerous terrain inherently. Going up this groove and we're moving into wet rock, it's steep, slips are possible. Uh, but that's not why we're in a helmet because, if, to be honest, if you fall off here with a helmet on, it's not going to do much good for you. The reason why we're wearing a helmet is because there's a lot of sheep that move around on top of Pavey Arc. Uh, there might be other people climbing on here, although not today it doesn't look like, but there might be other people climbing on here. There might be people up at the top and the helmets on top of our head to stop rock fall damaging us in that way. Yeah, so okay. that's the reason why helmets. Plus, it adds an extra bit of confidence to us. Yeah. Great, I feel good about wearing this. Good. <laughs> um, so what other kit do we need to go scrambling then? Ah. Uh, uh, I mean, scrambling wise, really, we don't need so much of the kit. You could take out a small rope. Uh, something like Jack's Rake, it's not really rope territory. The trainers, really, are what we're going to look at for safety kit. So I'm often looking for really grippy shoes, things that I can be very flexible with. I can jam them into cracks, and I've got as much traction on them as possible. So I want a good compound rubber. So good grippy shoes. Good grippy shoes, yeah. Yep, yeah. and that is all we need. Yeah. Um, what about gloves? Would you scramble in gloves? Like uh, I've got I've got these really good flippy over gloves so that I can grab the rock. Yeah, like, so... Would you shut uh, in gloves? Gloves can be applicable. Uh, you can either use a glove like you've got, so allowing your fingers to be free, or you can use a glove that's got sort of leather palms and leather fingertips on. Like a bike all, glove? Uh, well, it would, it would be a Via Ferrata or a scrambling glove that allows you to get some good grip onto the rock and keeps your hands warm whilst you're touching the rock because rock can be inherently cold. We've got sunshine out today, so I'm quite happy for my hands to be free. But yeah, gloves are a good option as well. Okay, fantastic. Well, let's get our helmets on and uh, off we go up Jack's Reek. Cool. Today, obviously, it's nice weather, but it has been raining, so the rock is a little bit slippy. Yeah, totally. Are there any special techniques that you'd employ for slippy rock? Uh, I, I mean, generally, yeah, for, for rock all round, there's certain sort of terms that people use, like uh, green is slippy and grey is grippy, and that's a great way to think about things. It works a little bit more when you're scrambling up gills, like we did up Stickle Gill, where there's going to be a lot more green rock. Inside this Jack Drake, there definitely is going to be some green rock in there. So we're looking for dry rock, or if we can't find dry rock, we're looking for little spikes that we can stick our shoes on top of. We can form the shoe around, because so unlike traditional scrambling with a stiff boot, we're looking for edges and placing our feet on top of things. Here we can place our feet on top of a, a spike or a bit of sort of crosley grippy rock that our shoe will form around it, and it gives us a lot more traction than trying to place it on 
on flat edges. And you mentioned before about three points of contact, yeah, what's totally. that? Yeah, so again, back into a sort of climbing terminology, three points of contact means that we've either got two hands and one foot, or we've got two feet and one hand, and at all points we want to try and keep that three points of contact. Sometimes you might end up with two points of contact and you'll be feeling a bit more confident in those areas. Apart from that, as a sort of try and keep it as religious as possible, that we're always three points of contact with the rock. So just for sort of understanding how rock is and what we're looking for, it's, it's a pretty safe route, Jack Strait, because a lot of people come on it, so a lot of anything that is loose has been taken off and has been knocked off. But we've had quite a harsh winter, we're just coming into spring, so everything's warming up, it's where loose rock can appear again. Uh, a good way of testing out rock is using the heel of your hand and just tapping it and feeling what it's like. It takes a bit of time and a bit of experience to get right, but you should be able to feel the shot going up your arm, you should be able to hear the sound of the rock, if it's hollow, if it feels hollow. Other things to think about is we don't pull out on a piece of rock ever. We try and pull down on rock because I'm pulling out on something that happens to be a bit loose. I might pull out on my hand. That could be either a shock or it could be catastrophic. So we're always thinking about down and pull and just knocking things in the air. And other things to think about is it, it, like this route will unfold for us. So as we're moving up, the holes will all appear. And wherever you feel there's a position where the, the holes aren't appearing, it's usually down to footwork. So we're gonna be really careful with the footwork. We're gonna work our feet up, even if it's incrementally over a couple of inches, and all of a sudden the next hole that we're looking for is gonna appear. So on something like Jack's Rake, it's a very well-traveled route. So we're looking for the areas where the rock's worn, where it looks more likely that people have traveled. Uh, if you're on stuff that's a little bit more hysteric I guess and people haven't traveled so much it requires quite a lot more route finding skill and I think really that requires you going out gaining the experience maybe coming out with somebody like myself or other types of scrambling guides who are then going to be able to take you through those areas and you learn and keep on learning and it's all about building up a dictionary of uh, placements and holds and, and how to find those routes that's a little bit more technical. Yeah, so you can't just rock up to a place if you've done no scrambling before and just go scrambling. It's something that you should learn incrementally. It definitely should learn incrementally. Sometimes approaching a climbing wall, gaining some climbing wall skills, is going to take you a little bit higher than what you're going to do. So harder technically, harder with the moves, but then when you come outside of the rock, although it's very different moving on rock, it, the movements are the same, the movement patterns are the same, and you, you, if you've got better movement patterns for inside, then you can apply that to outside, and it's better to be doing less technical stuff outside than what you would be doing inside, because of course we're not moving with ropes on this grade one. Yeah, so we're always climbing within our, our limits. Totally within our limits. We've had a great day on the hill today. Yep. Um, so run scrambling, is it quite a common thing? How many people are doing it? I think there's quite a few people out there who are running and scrambling. Uh, and I think a lot of it's based around uh, the sky running events that have appeared in the UK. So I'm an organiser and I organise for the Lake Sky Ultra and we've got a rear events we're organising for the Gangco Skyline. And I think really those are probably the two events that are pushing people to go out and scrambling, but we're not the people who have originated it. It has been going on, I think certainly the UK since 1980, somewhere around there. Things like the classic Rock Round and Rock and Run and Andy Hislop. There's a lot of history behind it, but it's still quite a niche area. Yeah, so yeah. just moving fast and light in the mountains and maybe so, doing yeah. a race along the way. Yeah, I think so. And I think probably born out of alpinism and mountaineering and yeah, moving that fast and light. Fantastic. So if people want to get their scrambling skills, up to the standard of doing one of these races like the Glencoe Skyline, like the Lake Sky Ultra, yeah. um, what should they be doing? Uh, well, ultimately, they should be going out and testing the water, so you know, just incrementally moving up through the skills we've done today, starting with something nice and easy, and then and then just growing and growing, or there's people like myself and the mountain run who put courses on, uh, and we'll teach people the skills that we've gone through today. Uh, there's other methods of doing it, going through climbing clubs, or going to the climbing wall, and getting climbing skills there, and then approaching the outdoors, but just always operating in a safe way. Fantastic. Well, I've had a really great day. Cool. Thank you very much, and give it a go.